I am a 35-year-old man, happily married to my high school sweetheart, Caroline, who is 32 years old. Caroline was my junior in high school, and she had always shown a keen interest in me. Over time, I began to reciprocate her feelings, and we started dating while we were both in college. Our relationship was a testament to long-distance love, as many doubted its viability. However, our love and determination to make it work were unwavering. We managed to sustain our love throughout college, and our friends often regarded our relationship as something extraordinary. Long-distance relationships were perceived as challenging, but we were willing to go to great lengths to keep our love alive. After I had established my career, and Caroline was nearing the end of her college journey, I decided to propose to her. Waiting any longer seemed futile, as we both knew that we couldn't bear to be apart. The early years of our marriage were filled with a sense of enchantment, akin to a honeymoon phase. We couldn't keep our hands off each other, and we prioritized each other above all else. We were madly in love, and our devotion was unwavering. As time went on, the honeymoon phase naturally subsided, but our happiness remained intact. We continued to cherish our days together, taking pleasure in little surprises that kept the romance alive. Our love was genuine and effortless, a testament to the deep connection we shared. To provide some context, I pursued a business education after completing my studies. My father had his own business, and even as a child, I was captivated by the world of business. I enjoyed watching my father interact with people and work diligently. His dedication left a lasting impression on me, and I knew from a young age that I wanted to follow in his footsteps. After college, I was eager to immerse myself in the world of business. I had a strong determination to succeed, and I worked tirelessly. My father was always to guide me, correcting my mistakes and offering invaluable advice. While encountered challenges and made mistakes in the beginning, these experiences were instrumental in my eventual success. I began to run the business efficiently and gain recognition and praise. After our marriage, Caroline made the decision to leave her job. She had been working at a firm, but a few months into our marriage, she chose to quit. I was supportive of her career aspirations and encouraged her to pursue her passions. However, Caroline expressed her desire to be a homemaker, citing her need for a break from work. She enjoyed staying at home, cooking, and tending to various household tasks. While I expressed concerns about the potential setbacks in her career due to an extended break, I ultimately respected her decision and provided unwavering support for her choice. I was fortunate enough to earn a comfortable income so it wasn't a matter of financial contribution to our household. I firmly believed that as the man, it was my responsibility to provide for my family, and I took great pride in doing so. When Caroline decided to quit her job, she initially presented it to me as a temporary break. However, I overheard a conversation she had with her mother where she confessed her intention to quit her job permanently and expressed a reluctance to work when she had the option to enjoy the fruits of my labor. This revelation hurt me deeply, not because she wanted to be a hama maker, but because she had felt the need to conceal her true intentions from me. I wondered why she didn't trust me enough to be honest about her desires. I had always been supportive of her choices and would never have judged her for her decision. Despite our years together, I realized that there was still a level of discomfort or mistrust between us. I chose not to confront her about this matter as I didn't want her to feel like I had invaded her privacy by overhearing her conversation with her mother. Instead, I made a conscious effort to be more considerate of my actions and behavior. I wanted to create a safe, secure, and comfortable table in Viramine where she felt completely at ease. I went out of my way to ensure that my actions didn't give her any reason to doubt my trustworthiness. Despite the initial shock of her lie, I continued to love and support her. Caroline excelled in her role as a homemaker. She kept herself occupied by managing our household, preparing delicious meals, and baking delightful treats. I appreciated her culinary skills and her knack for trying new recipes. She also had a talent for interior decoration, constantly updating her home's furnishings and decor to keep it stylish and inviting. Her dedication to making our house a warm and welcoming place was evident. Although she seemed content with her new life, I couldn't help but wonder why she had felt the need to deceive me. It left a lingering question in my mind, but I chose to focus on supporting her and maintaining a loving relationship. 
Update One made consistent efforts to maintain a positive and supportive relationship with Caroline. However, several months later, a minor conflict arose between us when we broached the topic of starting a family. It had been three fulfilling years since our marriage began, and life seemed generally content. Nevertheless, I began to yearn for the presence of children in our lives, prompting me to initiate a conversation with Caroline. Much to my surprise, her reaction was not what I had anticipated. She seemed to overreact, as if my mere discussion had transformed it into a demanding proposition. Despite my calm demeanor and clear intention to engage in a dialogue, she became extremely agitated, shouting and retreating to her bedroom, leaving me in utter shock. I had no intention of coercing her into anything she wasn't comfortable with. The decision to have children should always be mutual and rooted in a deep understanding between partners. However, Caroline's reaction and her abrupt departure to her room left me perplexed. It wasn't how we usually handled matters in our relationship, and I was disappointed to find that open communication appeared to be strained. In light of this, I chose not to pursue a conversation with her immediately. I believed that giving her space to reflect on her reaction might help her realize her mistake. I expected her to approach me once she had calmed on, but days passed without any sign of reconciliation. I even fell asleep in the living room, waiting for her to emerge from our bedroom and initiate a discussion, but that never happened. The following morning, I discovered Caroline in the kitchen preparing breakfast as if nothing had transpired. I stood there for a while, hoping she would initiate a conversation. However, she behaved as if I were invisible, refusing to acknowledge my presence. My eagerness to engage with her was met with indifference, further frustrating me. In response, I decided to mirror her lack of communication. If she felt that the issue was unimportant, I reasoned, then I would respond in kind. I carried on with my usual routine, going to work and attempting to maintain my composure. Despite my hopes for a text or message from Caroline, Miffin remained silent, deepening my disappointment. When I returned home in the evening, Caroline was inexplicably absent. This was highly unusual, as she rarely left the house at Thatham without informing me. I searched the kitchen for a note but found none. Concerned for her well-being, I tried calling her multiple times but shed it an answer. It became apparent that something was amiss when I realized Thatch hadn't prepared lunch or dinner, a rare occurrence. My anxiety intensified, and I even reached out to her friends but none of them knew her whereabouts. Fearing the worst, I was on the verge of contacting the authorities when Caroline finally returned home. I was flooded with relief embracing her and then scolding her for causing me such worry. Despite our reconciliation over dinner, an unsettling feeling lingered within me. Caroline's actions and behavior seemed uncharacteristic of the woman I had married. Her casual attitude toward her absence and her failure to communicate effectively left me deeply troubled. Our relationship had thrived on openness and mutual respect, and this change in her demeanor raised concerns about the strength of our bond. This made me wonder if our relationship was falling apart. Update Toy apologized for the delay in updating you, but a lot has happened in the past year, and it took me some time to sort things out. Here's what unfolded next, two days after the incident with Caroline's unexpected behavior. I found myself at a store picking up some items. While I was there, I decided to buy Caroline's favorite chocolate, hoping to rekindle our love. As he approached the counter to pay for the chocolates, I ran into Sarah, a friend of Caroline's. She greeted me and inquired about Caroline's well-being. He responded by saying that she would know if she had met Caroline just that previous day. Sarah appeared puzzled and clarified that she hadn't seen Caroline since the previous month. This revelation left me even more bewildered. I told Sarah that he must have misunderstood the situation, but as I drove back home, I called and shake the feeling that my marriage was unraveling due to Caroline's lies. I couldn't bear the thought of deceit in our relationship. I returned home and gave Caroline the chocolates I had bought for her. She seemed thrilled, and we engaged in our usual conversation, sharing laughter. However, I was merrily pretending to be at ease. My mind was consumed by thoughts of Carol Innie's whereabout as the previous day. As Caroline went to sleep that night, I couldn't resist my curiosity. I secretly took her phone and unlocked it. Upon checking her colleagues and messages, I was astonished to discover that she had been frequently cling my best friend, Simon, a 35-year-old male. The frequency of their communication, 
almost daily, raised red flags. Simon and I had been closer friends since childhood, both of us growing up together and taking over our respective family businesses at the same time. Simon, however, was quite different from me in terms of work ethic and ambition. He was more interested in partying and showed little enthusiasm for the business. In fact, he had been somewhat coerced by his father into taking over the family business. Despite our differences, Simon and he had a strong bond and we had enjoyed each other's company throughout our school and college years. I appreciated the fact that he got along well with Caroline, as I believed it was essential for my partner to get along with my best friend. The next day, I decided to meet with Simon, driven by curiosity and a need for answers. I wasn't planning to confront him about the phonicals, but I wanted to gauge if there were any clues in his behavior. I headed to his office, only to find that he was, as usual, out of the office, not taking his business responsibilities seriously. I called him, and he asked Meadow to wait for a few minutes, as he was on his way back. When Simon arrived, he greeted me with his customary cheerful demeanor and offered me something to eat or drink. I requested coffee, and we engaged in conversation about various topics. As our meeting came to an end, Simon inquired about Caroline's well-being expressing that he hadn't spoken to her in a while and suggesting that he should invite us over for dinner as a reunion. I replied with a smile, agreeing to the idea of a dinner gathering. As I left his office, I could already tell that my wife Caroline was shoving an affair behind my back with this man. I didn't require concrete proof to confirm my suspicions, I could read it in his deceitful eyes. It was evident, though I needed tangible evidence to approach the situation correctly. When I returned home, I maintained a facade of normalcy with Caroline. While she went to take a shower, I seized the opportunity to install a tracking app on her phone, which would grant me access to all her texts, calls, and phone activities. I was determined to gather the evidence I needed to proceed with a divorce. The following morning, my first action was to contact my lawyer. We had a detailed discussion about the situation, during which I expressed my adamant desire not to share any of my assets with Caroline after the divorce. She didn't deserve a single penny in my eyes. The lawyer explained that, with substantial evidence, it was possible to prevent her from benefiting financial Y from the divorce. I was determined to ensure that this would be Thekis. I closely monitored Caroline's phone, and it didn't take long for me to uncover the damning evidence I sought. I stumbled upon a repugnant exchange of text messages between Caroline and Simon. Their conversation turned me stomach, as Caroline revealed her intention to file for divorce in a few weeks and expressed her desire to share whatever she obtained from the divorce with Simon. They planned to marry soon, and it became evident that Caroline was genuinely in love with him, which added a painful layer to my betrayal. I promptly took screenshots of these messages relieved that I now possessed the crucial evidence required to strengthen my case. Immediately forwarded these screenshots to my lawyer, who assured me that my case was on solid ground. Without delay, he initiated the divorce proceedings and also filed a case against Caroline. I decided not to return home, instead, I rented an apartment, as I knew it would be some time before the legal proceedings concluded, and I couldn't bear to be around her any longer. Caroline received the divorce notice, and I'm certain she was taken aback. She sent me countless texts, desperately seeking answers and my whereabouts, but I remained steadfast in my resolve not to respond. I was determined to bring about her ruin in every possible way. The court proceedings began, and I had to attend numerous hearings. Fortunately, everything seemed tobe in my favor, thanks to the irrefutable evidence I had gathered. Over thekers of several months, the legal process played out, during which Carolyn repeatedly attempted to reconcile and apologize. However, I maintained my stoic indifference, refusing to let her acknowledge the pain I was enduring by totally ignore her existence. Caroline received almost nothing from the divorce, as her true intentions were blatantly obvious to everyone involved. She had no savings to her name, having not worked a single day since our marriage. It was evident to everyone that she had been with me solely for my financial support and had been engaged in an affair with my best friend, who had similar aspirations for wealth and success. As for Simon, I cut all ties with him and he wisely avoided approaching me as well, likely aware that any interaction would not end well for him. He never married Caroline as they had initially planned. 
His sole interest had been in extracting money from her, but that never materialized. When Simon's father learned the truth about his son's actions, he was deeply ashamed and resentful of him, given that Simon had been squandering his father's business while I had managed to elevate my own to new heights. The trauma of being betrayed by both my wife and my best friend was an incredibly difficult burden to bear. I had lost two of the closest individuals in my life, people who had been with me for many years. Life suddenly appeared bleak and unforgiving, and I fell into a deep depression. Fortunately, my parents were a constant source of support and stood by me throughout this challenging period. My mother urged me to seek therapy as a means of coping with my pain and dealing with the situation properly. Initially resistant, I eventually yielded to her advice, and I am grateful that she pushed me to take this step. Therapy allowed me to heal and manage my grief more effectively, sparing me from sinking into a pit of despair and depression. Several months later, I encountered Simon again. During this period, I was still battling depression and couldn't contain my anger when I saw him. I nearly resorted to physical violence, but office colleagues intervened and prevented an altercation. Subsequently, I learned that Simon's sound business had crumbled. His careless and inept behavior had resulted in significant losses and numerous problems. To escape from the emotional turmoil, I threw myself into my work once more. Immersing myself in my business helped me to temporarily forget pain and disappointment I had experienced. With time, the wounds began to heal, and I slowly moved forward with my life. Writing about my experiences today serves as a testament to my resilience and ability to overcome adversity. It is clear that I have progressed and grown stronger, leaving behind that painful chapter of my life with a sense of pride and self-assuredness.